Welcome to today's Aintus Wellbeing webinar as part of the Adult Learners Festival. Our speakers today are Fanola Colgan, Development Officer from Mental Health Ireland, who will look at the supportive steps to enhance your learning, and Dr. Paul Gaffney, Lead Consultant Psychologist with Sport Ireland Institute, and the author of On the Ball, which looks at how football can help your mental health. Today, Paul would look at how sports psychology can help learners and tutors during COVID-19. Please sit back and enjoy the presentations, and we encourage discussion between learners. This webinar is also available on the Aintus YouTube page, so please feel free to add a comment, give a like or a share, as it may help other learners. Thank you. And now over to Paul. Thanks very much, Barry. Thanks for having me. and. Um, uh, thanks for uh, um, the invitation uh, and the introduction. So I'm going to speak today, Barry, in relation to um, the question that everyone really asks. Certainly as a psychologist, everyone asks is, will things ever be the same again? Uh, are we ever going to get back to normal? And, and if we do get back to normal, what will that look like? And one of the hats I wear in my work is I work in, um, it's a very grand title, it's, it's, it's a high performance sport clinical psychology, but basically it means trying to help athletes and coaches with um, uh, problems and issues in the same way that you'd help people um, uh, in the HSE in Cavan or Monaghan with problems and issues as well, using the same kind of techniques and the same strategies. So the one thing about COVID is that we're all in the same boat, that the uh, the world has turned in its head or stopped to some degree, and we're all trying to make sense of it as best as we can. So. Um, a wee bit about myself there, Barry. You and I have worked together for a, a good number of years and it's great to be linked back in with you again. Um, my own background, I grew up in, in uh, Katy and Armagh. Family still live there and then uh, trained in Belfast in Dublin and then moved up here to Cavan um, about 20, nearly 21 years ago and uh, very much enjoy working with sport, through sport, but also um, people who work in sport uh, sports like life itself, there's ups and downs, uh, there's winners and losers, there's setbacks and triumphs, um, unexpected things happen, you can get a bad injury, can lay you off, get a bad decision that goes against you, you can feel down in the dumps, you can fall out with your teammates, but really everything is the sports and life itself and I've often thought that um, many of the people I was trying to help in sport, telling them a story from my own clinical work or indeed People uh, in everyday life tell them maybe how a sports uh, person would cope or would act. I just think there's great crossover um, and the, within sport. You, you see everything in life itself um, uh, and good days and bad days, uh, much the same things are. So it's always been an interest of mine um, and I've done a wee bit of writing over the years, a wee bit of research and it's lovely to be linked in with yourself. Any this part of the great work that uh, your organisation does in reaching out to people. So. Um, what we look at then is just a wee introduction, just suppose the impact of COVID-19, um, strategies that can help, stuff that I find helps, and stuff that you can start using today. And when I put this together, Barry, I really wanted stuff that people could watch this or maybe stop watching it and go off and do the thing if they felt that they wanted to. Um, we recommendations about stuff to read and watch and listen to, um, a few wee questions, and then just some conclusions as well. Just over a year since the first COVID case in Ireland was uh, discovered, um, and I don't think any of us had the foggiest idea of what this was going to look like. Um, I can remember talking to friends of mine on the 8th of February last year, I think it was the day of the general election, and I think Ireland played uh, it was Wales in the rugby. And I remember the talk of this virus, and it was, uh, wasn't in, uh, really as far as us then, and we were hoping that maybe the warm weather would chase it away, but I think none of us none of us thought we'd still be living with it and still be in the highest level of lockdown over a year later. And I think what it's brought to people is um, uh, infection, isolation, sickness, potentially death. Um, we all know people who've died of it uh, and we all know people who've had it at this stage. What that brings in is anxiety, fear, loneliness, which I think is the, the biggest issue. I think the problem with social distancing is actually physical distancing. We don't get to see people, families can't interact in the way they used to, grandchildren can't hug their grandparents, that kind of thing. And I think we're lonely. Um, and this, that we're always better, you know, when we're on a team or as part of a family or as part of a group. But I think it's the loneliness that's really getting to people, especially as restrictions mean that 
some um, services have had to curtail what they do for periods of time. Loss, bereavement, grief, um, hopelessness, and some really, really sad cases, tragic cases. Um, and no country has really escaped it, um, and certainly no community in Ireland has escaped it either. Massive disruption to really life as we knew it, to education, the economy, sport, travel, everything, everything that we enjoy about life, everything that certainly for me, everything I like to look forward to or enjoy talking about or like being part of um, is different or not there at all. Economically, a lot of people have lost their jobs, huge financial uncertainty. People have lost their businesses, maybe built up over generations when families gone, in some cases gone very quickly. Um, we're in for a deep recession, whatever about this costs and the funding that the government given to keep uh, people uh, in food and have a roof over their heads. But this is going to mean a deep, deep recession and we're going to pay this back for years and years. The vulnerability then on older people, I think people who live on their own or people who are more dependent on others for um, getting around or getting messages or getting services, uh, the world has become a lot smaller for those people. Um, and in that context, they've been lonely um, of not seeing people as often. And some of the older people I would work with might be feeling a wee bit scared or, or more isolated in their home. Big fear, of course, that, that they could um, in some way contract COVID and be more vulnerable to dying as well. There's also a rising uncertainty in Ireland and abroad about what happens next. Every company deals with it their own way. Um, and I suppose there's never a day goes by where somebody's not comparing our response with other countries. Some we seem to be doing better than, some we seem to be not doing as well on. But um, it's in every news bulletin, isn't it? And, and it's in every paper. But there has been an amazing collective effort that people have isolated and protected each other. People have changed their lives. People have taken these um, uh, difficulties and borne them with, with great courage and fortitude of all ages, younger children, uh, people uh, going out to work, parents, families, older people, everybody's taking the hit here and everybody's trying to do their best. And as the figures start to go down again, please God, um, that's a good sign and are collectively coming together um, by staying away from each other is, is hopefully keeping people safe as the vaccines get rolled out. And um, there's just some glint at least of a, of a different life coming. Also, amazing things happened uh, configuring the uh, changes. Um, the email system, even like uh, doctors I've spoken to were able to directly email hospitals in a way that they couldn't do before. Within the HSE, um, I was redeployed for a time to a COVID hub and to a test centre and changes that would have taken years um, through the usual channels happened in, in really no time. People um, uh, change role, change job, um, did whatever they were asked to do and did it really, you know, in, in, in no time at all. So there's been some amazing reconfiguration um, and things have moved on very, very quickly because they needed to. And I suppose, Barry, if you're, um, if you have, you know, enough food to eat and you're safe in your home and you're with people that, that you get on with and you have enough money in your pocket, it's probably not been the worst thing that ever happened and that some people talk about almost a, a chance to maybe for the first time ever in their lives sit back not go anywhere, not do much, and just maybe evaluate where they are. And I think a lot of people are saying to me, as much as they'd love to get back to normality and hustle and bustle, a lot of people are saying, you know, I wouldn't want it to be just the same again. Maybe I'd have got too busy. Maybe I'd have become too frenetic. Maybe it was too much coming and going. So I think whatever happens, we're going to be living in a different place. Um, and the world definitely is, has, has turned on, on its head. There's no, no, no question of that. So in terms of everyday life that the, the strategies nine simple strategies I've picked out here and if people want to do one of them or none of them that's great you want to do all nine of them that'll be beneficial too um, so they are be your best exercise as much as you can predictions don't help allow for the bad days take responsibility everyone's different individuals are different enjoy what you can uh, don't judge and take some time and the picture for anybody over Cavan, I, I live in Cavan Town, but one of the lovely things about living in Cavan Town is the access to West Cavan and the stunning scenery over that way. And anybody who knows the uh, uh, Keelche area will know that as the boardwalk from the, from the mountain as it comes down. It's so slippy enough and nice, but uh, on the day that picture was taken, uh, glorious and a kind of a nice way to, to look down in the world and see what's happening. 
firstly, be your best. Um, for most of us, um, having a schedule each day is really important. And if your life has been turned upside down and you're not going out to work or you're not learning the way you used to or you're not seeing people who you normally would, having a routine or structure is probably more important than ever. I know a few people I've worked with who probably laying on in bed because there was nothing much to do, nothing much to get up for. But then that means they're out of rhythm, they're eating at different times. It's hard to get back to sleep the next night and the next night. And you're out before you know it, you're out of sorts. Adults, children, we all do better with them um, with routine and structure. So um, the more routine and structure, I think especially in the morning time, having some kind of a simmer getting up time, having some kind of a simmer routine in the morning tends to help rather than just letting the day run on. And maybe before you know it, you've lost track and what you've meant to do that day, you haven't got done and it's a hangover in the end to the next day. So um, a psychologist, the five things we always encourage people to look at is, first of all, your biology. Um, we all need enough uh, sleep, but not too much, enough food and nurturance, but not too much, and enough activity, but not too much. Probably the better, simply because um, you are more in check. You know, we all feel better if there's what we call a, a biological kind of a routine. To, uh, eat more or less the same time each day, sleep more or less time, more or less the same time each day, and have make sure you have some activity. Um, too much time in the house, even if you're not able to be too mobile, even get outside for a breath of air, change of scenery will make a difference. I think doing what you need to do, a lot of people I'm working with and, and friends and family are saying, I wake up with three or four things to do and I get none of them done. And these would be people who'd be doing 20 things a day in normal times. So maybe having a list of things you want to do. I think lists don't work once they go beyond six, because once they go beyond six things, uh, most people um, are, uh, like myself uh, probably forget the, they're there and, and pretend they're not there. Anything up to six is doable. We tip that I use is um, if you have six things to do today and you only get three done, then leave the other three on for tomorrow with maybe three new ones and you might have get a chance to get them done. It's just at more than six, it becomes overwhelming. I think emotionally it's important to do things that matter to you or inspire you or make a difference. I have a friend of mine is a great Calvin fan, and I don't think there's a day has gone by since uh, November that he hasn't watched the rerun of one of the Calvin games during the summer, uh, or sorry, during the during the winter, the winter uh, championship we had, um, whichever the games, the morning game, the Donegal game, um, whatever game, those two particularly. But it's just almost touching into some joy, something special. And for, for him, that's his emotional high. For other people, they could be watching a favourite movie, watching your soaps, could be talking to somebody on the phone who you uh, are close to. It could be an activity or something that matters to you. For kids, it could be doing something online, uh, could be playing a PlayStation game. But we all need something, especially these days, which can be long and hard, especially with the, the being a bit more wintry lately, doing something you enjoy. For me, it might be just listening to a bit of music or reading something, but some wee bit of inspiration because um, they're long days at the minute, they're tough days. Also important to stay connected to people. Um, it's very easy in this uh, pandemic to kind of back into your own wee corner, your own wee space um, and lose contact with people. So just stay in touch with people. Unfortunately, um, that's mainly remote or, or, or virtually, um, unless you're in work or in a job that you need to go into work at. But staying in touch with people is always good for us because loneliness and being on your own um, tends to be a fester ground for all sorts of worries and anxieties that ultimately may not actually be real at all. But when you're when you're on your own and you don't develop people's perspective, then um, it can be hard enough to figure things out at times. And thinking is there evidence for what you think? I was talking to somebody the other day that said this will never get better. And then I was chatting to somebody afterwards who was saying that vaccine-wise, you know, numbers are doing well that um, the hospitals are doing better and, you know, that basically um, depends what day you look at it. Some days are more hopeful than others. But I think that was probably the case before COVID came in the first place. As usual, the advice we give to everybody, if you want to feel a wee bit better today, do some exercise. And if you're not able to walk, do some exercise where you're sitting. Uh, if you can't walk too far, um, do, do, do some kind of movement, even, uh, you know, any kind of any kind of stretching, even just movement is a sense. And when we don't get to move, um, it tends not to be good for us. Whereas if we are able to move, and if you can take a walk and within the limits and the, the restrictions, and and maybe a wee bit of vigorous exercise, it's always better for you. Um, so at any stage, um, anything is good. Benefits of exercise is that it, it literally clears your head. You could be going for a walk or do a bit of a stretch or something like that. 
then you'll find that because your your focus is on something else, that whatever was worrying you or concerning you isn't so much the case. One of the tips for young families, especially families where children have to really can't go too far, maybe living in tight enough accommodation, would be at times getting outside. One of the things that definitely working with parents and adolescents is maybe getting them out for a walk and have a chat outside the house, especially if there's been a disagreement, because it's very hard to solve all the problems and settle all the arguments if you're just inside all the time. So exercise and getting out as much as you can are really important. We've seen the parole politicians uh, week after week um, get into trouble even this week. You know, you told us that the schools would be back. You told us that construction would start, but predictions don't help. And the more we uh, predict things, the less uh, easy it gets because um, rare events happen much more often than you think. And while people would say, well, you know, this is once in a lifetime, once in a generation, and pandemics happen quite often. Pandemics happen regularly. Um, the difference with this one is that it's spread from its source much quicker than any previously, and it's much more, um, uh, it's much more infectious. One of the great stories uh, I, I, I've uh, talked to Barry about was um, how sport shows us that life is unpredictable. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, in the 2016 season, Leicester City won the English Premiership title. In fact, they're doing quite well this season as well um, so far. But somebody, a number of people actually got a bet on them at 5,001 before that season began that Leicester City would be champions. And anybody knows anything with football, that those are actually really good odds because there's 20 teams and in a, in a 20 horse race, uh, strange things can happen. To give you some perspective on that, there was also a bet at the time. Apparently, I didn't see this, but people have reported there was a bet available at the same time that Bono, the lead singer from U2, uh, the odds on him becoming Pope were also 5,000 to 1. So, you know, maybe that gives you some perspective. Just in Calvin, the great celebrations since the uh, Ulster final um, win and the great campaign uh, last season. And Ray Galligan, the goalkeeper and captain, uh, got an all star. Um, but I was talking to somebody the other day who uh, thought that, um, looked at the run of games Calvin had and thought if they beat Bonham, anything could happen and you wouldn't know where they'd end up. Uh, Ray Galligan to a goalkeeper, he'd get an all star. But your man got that at 50 to 1 odds. So I think what that shows us is that unpredictable things happen much more often than you would think. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's why predictions aren't really especially helpful. And part of that's because nowadays, folks, we have to deal with so much information. Um, the On average, if you've got a smartphone like that, there are the, the average person checks your smartphone. This is the average person checks your smartphone about 80 times a day. Um, I, I probably check it more than that. And maybe you would too, Barry. And certainly for some of your younger folk, there's some research suggesting that they might uh, interact with their phones 250 times a day. Um, so we deal with lots of information, but we're not programmed to deal with that. Um, phones, I guess, uh, Zoom, this platform we're using, these were only you know, you know, ideas 20 years ago. So um, we're not built to take in. There's so much information from every source and it makes it hard to figure it out and it makes it hard to make predictions from it as well. And the more news input you get can be overwhelming. And guess when this will be over, I think it makes us even more anxious. And certainly what, what, one piece of advice I think is maybe you only get one news bump in the day because it seems to be the same news. Maybe later in the day, uh, if, if, because there's more news in or maybe your routine's early in the morning. But I find that the days that I watch more than one news bulletin, I, it kind of gets me down but because while there is hopefully some good news, the overwhelming feeling is always negative. So maybe one news bulletin a day is enough. Bit of a tip here, folks, I'm a West Ham fan. I have lots of issues, but that is one of them. Although they're doing quite well at the moment. They're, they're um, uh, doing well in the premiership. But there's a great story, if you, if you, if you look on YouTube, from Harry Redknapp um, about Titty Shev, the striker. Um, it's a great story that he tells. Um, and it really brings, it brings out the point that we believe what we want to believe. So if you have a look at that sometime, it's a funny story, but it shows that people believe what they want to believe as well. The other thing we know about predictions is a brilliant psychologist over at Harvard, a guy called Dan Gilbert. Um, again, if you look him up, it was Google him, YouTube. Um, and what all his research is around um, predictions that we're not good at predictions, we're not good at making predictions, and we're not. Um, it's something that's really not good for us. So as much as possible, folks, um, try not to predict. And again, Barry, did, did you think... Um, if we'd have been talking this time last year, that we'd be having a, a chat here a year into a pandemic on a thing called Zoom 
uh, which I certainly hadn't heard of a year ago either. So who knows? Who knows? So folks, predictions don't help. I think even myself, my, I'm lucky if I have a job. I'm, uh, you know, I'm very privileged in that. I get paid anyway. I'm very, very lucky. Uh, get to work with great colleagues and, and do work, which means a lot to me and hopefully from time to time help people. So it's a huge privilege. But even at that, there will be down days where maybe you're not as energetic, you're tired, doing the basic tasks are difficult. And I'm lucky, I don't think my load is, is that heavy. I know people have a lot more of a time with than I do. So you will have bad days, dark days. It's a picture of empty streets in Dublin. Um, who'd have thought at this time of year? And there's nobody whose form is going to be steady every day. But if you are in a very low place, folks, and you can, this thing can bring you to very low places. You can think of over things, mull things over, maybe not hear from somebody, maybe somebody lets you down. Um, but uh, what I would say to you is but please reach out and get in touch with someone you trust right away or as soon as you feel that you can. Uh, because when we're on our own or we feel we're misunderstood or we feel we don't matter, it's not good for us. And these pandemics are the perfect conditions for, for us to feel more vulnerable than we normally would, in fact, the problem than we ever would. So again, folks, there is lots of help out there. And just talk with someone. And I would a lot of people ring me who there is no particular reason. They just say, I just need to talk to someone. And you don't need to explain why you rang. Um, there's brilliant services and from Finola's great organisation through Mental Health Ireland and all of the funded services that are out there and the voluntary services in the community. There's people waiting for you to call. Um, and there'll be like you, there'll be like fellow pilgrims trying to figure this thing out, but at least you'll not be on your own. And that's important because the bad days are, are almost always lonely days, isolated days. Um, and make sure that you reach out. And indeed, if, if there's somebody you worry about, reach out and um, talk to them take them on board as well. Nothing which happens in life worth anything where we don't take some responsibility. And um, we will live an unhappy life if we always compare ourselves to others. The, the super highway to unhappiness, folks, is to compare yourself with anybody. When people say to me, what's the one thing I could do to be happier? Um, after taking a walk, I would say, what should you compare yourself with? Because there'll always be somebody who seems to have it easier, seems a bit better, seems a bit handier than you or me. There's, there's maybe times when you look back when you were fitter or younger, less grey hair, or less bald, whatever it would be. But the bottom line is, um, if you compare yourself to much more people, um, it, it, it will make you unhappy. And all you can do today is just take responsibility for where you are. Uh, try to live the best day you can. Try to do your best in the circumstances. And the first step to an improved life is, is just to, to do that. That picture is from is of the Cavan team on the first National League game back it was the 26th of um, 27th of January this uh, in 2020 when they were up to Armagh. They worked with the team uh, last year and, and continue to work with them this year. And one of the things that was interesting in that game was that they uh, Cavan went into that game um, and were 16 points down uh, going into injury time. And something interesting happened that in injury time, they actually, uh, they won that part of the game. They outscored Armagh for injury time um, and they ended up being beaten by 13 points, whereas at one stage it looked like a 20 point defeat was on the cards. But they took responsibility and they stood up and the and they, 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 they journey that they went on from then took them to some amazing high end places, did some great comebacks, some great wins, some bad defeats. Um, they were ultimately relegated to Division 3, but they went into the Ulster Championship and ended up back in the athletic rounds in Armagh um, uh, 11 months after uh, that first game and had a wonderful out against Donegal. And, uh, and uh, the rest is, is history, as they say. But the key thing was they took responsibility and they 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 didn't let the, 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 the season run away after them. They got heavily beaten that first night, but that was the genesis. That was the seeds that were sown for them to become Ulster champions um, 10 or 11 months later, take responsibility. I love that quote from Lou Holtz, the uh, brilliant American football coach, and he says that the person who complains about the bounce of the ball is likely to be the one who dropped it. Um, and that's usually true, that um, uh, you have to sometimes work to make your luck, and things go against you, things are hard, but you've got to make your own luck, uh, and you've got to take that responsibility. So how do you do it? I think do one thing every day you prefer not to. It could be opening a bill, it could be uh, doing a job you hate, it could be talking to somebody you're not keen on talking to, but you know you have to. If you do one thing a day, we'd rather not. It's the first step toward 
be more responsibility. And if you really like sport, um, one of the things in Netflix that's a must watch for a sports fan is The Last Dance Michael Jordan, which is all about responsibility, personal and team. And if you're interested in talks and online talks, um, the people who are very good on responsibility at the moment are a guy called James Clear, Jacko Wilnick, and uh, Jordan Peterson. And um, well worth a look if you're interested in those kind of talks. I think while the themes and the impact on us as a community through the pandemic, it impacts on all of us. We are all different and we would be different anyway. And um, your circumstances are different. My circumstances are different. And what works for some people may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. So we are we are different, but we do need each other. And Michael Jordan says talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. So folks, everyone will cope in their own way. There's no one size fits all. And um, one of the uh, our athletes in Sport Ireland uh, um, who best epitomises, I think, uh, the qualities of being in a great team, but also being an individual, is Alan Keane, one of our Paralympic swimmers, who's, who's pictured there. And Alan hopefully be going to um, Tokyo um, in uh, the, the summer for the rearranged games. Um, so we, everyone uh, is different. And I think treating people differently uh, what works for some people uh, is, is one thing and what works for somebody else is different. So we're not all the same. And the next time you have conflict with someone, folks often this time of year, parents arguing, parents and children arguing, maybe work colleagues arguing, maybe teammates arguing. Um, these skills are quite helpful. Um, so Barry, the best way to avoid a row with anybody is ask yourself these five questions. Is this the right time to have this discussion? Or is that person just cheesed off or tired? Or am I too annoyed at this stage? Is this the right approach? Should I send an email? Should I talk when we get a chance to talk face to face? Should I ask somebody else's advice? Is this the right person? Is this the person who can help me with the issue? Or do I need to go to somebody else? And is this the right place? Should I meet them somewhere else? Should we do it elsewhere? And is this the right problem to be talking about? Or is there some other thing going on? And I find when you go through those five steps, and even in my own life, that if you answer those questions, then you might go ahead and confront in the person anyway. But just the top skills, finding out, uh, is this the right time, approach, person, place, and problem? Useful set of skills as well. I think despite the doom and gloom, you have to take the good things in. There's a nice stretch on the evenings. Um, there's uh, the, definitely the mornings are getting brighter, the wilds are a wee bit better, uh, and those small shoots of spring are continuing to show. Um, a lot of people talk about feeling that this is dead time, it's a year they've lost, it's time they'll never get back, but I always think of the great Muhammad Ali quote when he said, don't count the days, but make the days count, because despite the limitations and restrictions and maybe having less money, and if you have, if you have money, there's less places to spend it, that's for sure, uh, but it's a crucial to do something you enjoy every day because otherwise I think the days get to feel the same. One day rolls into the other. Lack of school, maybe lack of work, lack of education, lack of input. Um, it's important you do something you can guarantee you would enjoy. And whatever the, what that might be, just guarantee you enjoy it. And it's been and could be long again to get back to what we enjoy. So we need to lift every day. And so does your family, teammates and colleagues. And maybe that we call or that we text or share and that we joke or, or um, just checking in with somebody. That could mean the world to somebody today. You could reach out and really brighten up somebody's day just by taking 10 seconds to see how they're doing. Um, and, and people enjoy that. So making decisions about at least one thing you enjoy each day, and even better, make a note of what it will be and then wait the experience. Uh, for myself, I would tend to get up early in the mornings and maybe have a read through stuff and uh, listen to a bit of music um, just enjoy that kind of stuff, kind of get energised for the day. Um, and if I don't do that, I find myself not just as not just as energetic or positive, but something you enjoy every day because the days can seem very long and certainly can seem uh, very samey. Everybody's doing their best. Um, everybody is doing their best. And I think this is likely to be the first time for us to witness a pandemic. But you know, in our part of the world, uh, we've seen lots of hard times and we've all had plenty of setbacks. But what makes for a necessary, needless suffering is maybe judging ourselves for how well we're doing, comparing ourselves unfavorably with others. Um, and I think the thing is, you never know what anybody else's life is like, and you never know how someone else is coping. And one of the great learnings in my job is you can meet a person and see them and see what they do and who they are and where they live and what they drive and all of that. 
you don't have a clue. You don't have a clue what's going on for the person. And inside, somebody could be falling apart by looking the part outside. So we never really know, folks. And we always make every decision in life with incomplete information because we can't tell the future. So, you know, don't worry about it. Um, don't judge because ultimately, um, judging ourselves and all people is the road, you know, town that brings us down. Um, and I think, uh, um, you know, what I would always say to people is you just never know what somebody else is going through. So be kind, don't judge because you never, you never really know. Alan O'Mara's book is a fine book on living with depression and find a way through it. Um, and again, I think with mental health, um, we still have a long way to come, folks, um, in terms of, of looking after mental health. Um, it's got better, but not much better, because ultimately we tell children to brush their teeth and wash their hands every day. But do we tell them, you know, they're loved every day? Do we tell them to make sure they ask for help every day? Do we tell them that it's likely they're going to run into a problem at some stage that they might need help with? Do we tell them never to be stuck, always come? And I'd love to see a stage where the same way we tell children to brush their teeth, wash their hands, watch both sides of the road, that we'd have a conversation about their, their mental health as well. Because ultimately, the one thing in life is certain, no matter who you are, is setbacks, disappointments, failure, and all the other things hurt. And in the same way as we, we get them to clean their hands, so they don't get infections, or get them to brush their teeth, they so don't have painful extractions, I think we can do better in terms of, of, of the emotional and mental side of things because often those are hidden and uh, we don't see them. So, you know, um, we've a wee bit to go on that, but it starts with don't judge yourself, don't judge somebody else. And always remember, you never really know what's going on for somebody else, especially some of the dark stuff. You might never know it. Take some time. It's interesting that over the winter, a lot of people have said to me that the days are very long, but now when there's a wee bit of brightness, um, a friend of mine was saying that, I God, I don't have time anymore because... I'm back doing a few bits and pieces. I'm, I'm going out for a run in the morning or, you know, the, the, uh, it's getting a bit busier with, with maybe schools come back next week and that. So, um, you know, taking some time. So I think whatever happens, the world is different. And I think for myself particularly, if I don't get a wee bit of time to, to myself, because my job really involves giving time to all people. That's what I do. I go in and give time and energy uh, to other people. That's essentially what it is. Um, uh, as many people's jobs, that's what it involves. But if I don't get enough time for myself, if I don't put my oxygen mask on uh, in the morning or maybe in the evening or maybe during the day, if it's not every day, how can I be helpful or effective or how can I be even happy? So taking some time, just getting some time to yourself, um, ideally maybe in the mornings uh, or in the evening, um, and just becoming aware of most. And even just noticing your breathing, a couple of nice deep breaths, breathing properly, taking a good rest. And if you do get five minutes to yourself, folks always take it because um, you never get time back. You never get time back. So make sure that if you have a chance to relax, take some time, especially during these, these, these days where, where it can be hard enough going, uh, it's important that we would do that. If you want to, we look online. One of my favourite speakers, a guy called John kabat in. A lot of talk lately about mindfulness, which essentially is doing nothing on purpose, and it's good for us. Um, and there's all sorts of apps and other things to look up as well. I know for some people, uh, just even popping into a church these days, um, and light the candle on their own or just sitting there quietly um, or even joining the online church services. Anything that gives you a feeling of well-being, quietness and just taking a bit of time to yourself is always good for us. So sometimes including silence can be the best time of all. So folks, as we come toward the end, um, just these are 10 things I've pulled just if you're a reader um, and if you're not, there's stuff coming for you, don't worry about that. Um, these are sport focused because for me, um, sport and life are very much the same. Life's a wonderful adventure. It's a challenge. Um, the trick is to try to live the best life you can and be as happy as you can and um, do as much as you can do with people that you care about. Well, pretty much it. And sport's largely the same, uh, except in a different area. So my some of my favourite books at the moment, um, Atomic Habits is a brilliant book. If you want to change something in your life, well worth looking at. Jordan Peterson's Twelve Rules for Life, controversial but well worth reading. Uh, Stillness is the Key, Ran Holiday, and Daring Greatly by Brandy Brown. Um, but any of those books up there are well worth a look, folks. Those are just some of my favourites at the moment. If you're somebody who likes to watch things, especially maybe on the your laptop or your, your phone or your, or your tablet, um, Kenny McGonagall's talk, How to Make Stress Your Friend, a lovely talk from a psychologist who shows that by uh, stress isn't necessarily bad for us, 
but stress can be bad for us if we perceive it as being bad for us. So if I see a problem coming and I notice my heart rate speeding up and my, you know, I'm beginning to sweat or my flows, you know, blood flows increasing because I got to respond to a problem, whatever that would be. If I see that as, as something, as a challenge, as something that needs to be done, something that I'm good at doing, then the body doesn't read it as stress when the body reads it as a challenge. In the same way, if you take a run or challenge yourself physically, there's two sides to it. There's this is going to hurt, but, but there's also, God, I did that all right, I managed that okay. So stress isn't necessarily bad for you. It depends how you look at it. There's a great talk with Kelly McGonagall, well worth looking at. Um, again, a uh, uh, lovely talk there, emotional first aid guy, went Swedish psychologist, brilliant talk. Any of his stuff is really refreshed and well worth listening to. And again, for a bit of a bit of development, um, I grew up in Katy, so um, uh, it was a lot of um, uh, uh, friends would have grown up in the country and were farming and that. But uh, I have to say, I love the two Johnnies. I love their sense of humour and I love their uh, their wit. And even though they're from Tipperary, um, they're always worth listening to and they're always a bit of crack. And then finally, folks, if you're somebody who's in the podcast and the younger folk these days are, there's any number of these. If you're finding it hard at the moment, um, the Owning It, the Anxiety podcast by Caroline Ford and Irish uh, journalist is brilliant. Um, uh, mindfulness meditation. If you want to practice getting a bit of time for yourself, Mark Williams and Spotify is fantastic. And if you want a bit of different music, uh, two of my favorite musicians at the moment, brilliant Susanna Hoffs and the Bangles and Matthew Sweet. Um, they have a lovely series of cover versions um, on those albums. But folks, just something to listen to, um, something different, something to try um, and then figure it for yourself. There is good help available these days. And my apologies to Finola um, because I, I promised her I'd put Mental Health Ireland's website on here. I didn't get to it in time. So um, I'm practicing non judging myself at the moment for this. Sorry about that. But um, that's a brilliant website. Some others that are useful are getselfhelp.co.uk, which would be the website as a psychologist that we use most because there's lots of really good information. I'd probably be on there every day looking something for someone uh, to try to uh, give somebody resources. Send habits if you're interested and in maybe deciding we're in Lent again, maybe time to think of a change and uh, time to think about habits. Hard to do this year because every day feels like Lent, but um, it has done for a while. But if you were thinking of a habit or change, and that's a brilliant site worth looking at. A lot of people nowadays, uh, since the pandemic, are talking about kind of downsizing, and not as much spending. A lot of people declutter their houses. I've never seen as many skips outside houses as I did in the last year. So people may be saying, do I need all this stuff? You know, do I need to, do I need to accumulate all this stuff? Do I need to keep all this stuff? Do I need to buy all this stuff? So the minimalists, a really nice site there. Some good advice, but maybe living with less, but living a simple but happier life. James Clear is, for my money, the, the best of the... Uh, Experts, a lot of the high performance athletes, footballers, rugby players, he's the guy you listen to at the moment. Um, one of the things he talks about really well is about the boredom of high performance. If he, um, if you're lucky enough to work with some of the people I get to work with, they train for um, some of our Olympic athletes who are getting close to that date now, would be training for um, our rowers are just back from a camp in Italy where they would have been training you know, um, seven hours a day, every day. So, you know, they're, 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 there's a lot of working. But again, I find one of the, the big differences between really good athletes and players and, and really brilliant athletes and players, it's your ability to deal with doing the same thing over and over and over again. There's sense you deal with boredom and uh, James Clear's got some good advice on that. If you want to spend a few bob, folks, is a Wise Minds, a very useful site. Um, some of the top psychologists in the world on there and some really good advice that you can take either. You can sign up monthly or yearly, but that's a site that people will find useful as well. But I suppose just in terms of questions for yourself, folks, three questions I've thought about. Um, maybe looking at the nine ideas, um, be patient, essentially, is are what my nine tips come to, because we don't really have full control over it. We don't know how the virus is going to behave. All we can do is the wee bit we can do within our own space and um, to look after ourselves and the people around us well each day. That's about all you can do. Otherwise, it's just about being patient. And this, this, the nine skills feed into that idea of being patient. But all I said is maybe think about one thing you could do next. Um, think about the one activity that's helped you most in lockdown. And for a lot of people, they talk about walking. Um, I know, Barry, you talk about maybe where people find it hard to get attention or to get things done. I think that's often a trigger to go and take a walk or do something. I know for myself, if I find it hard to focus on something, just taking a quick break. Um, I was teaching, uh, do it for a bit of teaching by Zoom, I was teaching a webinar earlier today. 
and uh, the, the people I work with, they would believe that about an hour on Zoom at a time is enough, that any more than an hour, you need a break, you need a step back, because it's quite an intense. So any of your online platforms, making sure you get a break from that as often as you can. And also, folks, think about it in 10 years' time. Um, the reality is life will move on, the planet will move on, and uh, um, you know, in 10 years' time, we, we, will, we will be uh, talking about something else. So um, think about in 10 years' time, what would we have talked about differently? In the same way, back if you think about back in, 20, in 2011, you know, we were talking about the IMF, we were talking about uh, we were still deep in recession. Remember, the allowances were cut, the pension was cut. That's what we talked about 10 years ago. 10 years later, different set of issues to talk about, as it will be 10 years from now. What maybe folks think about, if you were to imagine talk to somebody in 10 years' time, what would you tell them that got you through COVID? What was the thing that helped? What was the thing that kept you going? What was the thing that you could come back to? Because folks, the one thing about time is that it doesn't stand still and it will keep moving on and keep going. So folks, just a reiteration then, just them, the strategist can help, be patient, break that into the be your best, your your um, your five uh, uh, issues every day, your behaviour, your biology, your emotions, your social, your thinking. Any exercise is good, the more the better, but any exercise is good. Try not to make predictions because you'll ultimately probably get it wrong and getting it wrong will frustrate you the way it does the commentators, the journalists and the politicians. There will be bad days. There will be bad days, no matter who you are. Look after yourself during those and reach out to all the people to make sure that their bad days aren't as bad as they, as they might be. But take responsibility. Yes, there's not much we can do, but there's definitely some things you can do. Pick one thing today that you you, you know you, you, you maybe would normally avoid, even when you're making your bed. Take responsibility, do something, and you will feel better for it. Remember, we're all in this experience. We're all going through it at the same time, but people are different. And that works for you may not work for me, and that helps one person may not help someone else. Don't worry too much about that. Everyone is different and no one's the same. And no one size fits all either. Where you can enjoy what you can, a wee bit of enjoyment. Don't leave it for the weekend takeaway or the weekend, you know, a bottle of wine or a few beers, you know. Um, definitely do that. Relax, super, no problem. But do something every day because the days are long, the weeks are long. And just do something you enjoy, even something small. Uh, it'll be something to look forward to. It'll give your day a routine. And it'll also mean that you're not having to wait for the weekend. Not that there's much to wait for these days but just do something every day. No judgment, folks. You know, don't judge yourself. Don't judge anybody else. It's a super highway on happiness and everybody's doing their best, but so are you. And finally, take some time here and there. These can be very long days, especially if you're busy, but caring for people or families or at work. Just take some time for yourself. Time is the one thing you'll never get back. So make sure you take some time. Thank you, Paul, for that wonderful presentation. There really is something for both learners and educators in there. Next, we have Fanola Colgan, Development Officer with Mental Health Ireland, who are also members of Antus. If you would like to become a member of Antus, visit www.antus.com. Now for Fanola. So Barry, thank you very much for inviting me here uh, to be party to your um, session. And I'm delighted to be working with Paul as well on this. So what we're going to look at is the supportive steps to enhance your learning. And Paul has already kind of talked about the importance of getting out there and being taking on challenges and not to find barriers in your learning. So, but before I kind of get into all of this, I'd like you to just take 30 seconds and, and just reflect for a moment before you go on with following on and the rest of this presentation. And what you see there in the background is a box. He's, her name is Rua, and she came to us in Westmead as an orphaned fox uh, that a neighbour had found in the field. He brought her home for a week, fed her on cat pellets, and then landed her with us. And we adopted her as, as a pet, and even to the point that she was in our kitchen until, of course, she got too strong. And like, for me, that story is about somebody recognising somebody in stress, struggling, took care of her, and, and then helped that helped her on and that's what we often have to do in life watch out for each other be supportive and to be able to be respond to that care as well and when we do we can give out so much more joy so what you focus on grows what you think about expands and what you dwell upon determines your destiny uh, from robin sharma and basically what that's really saying to us 
like when you study, you grow. And when you think positively, you expand, you, you get confident, you, you have belief in what you're learning. And then when you dwell on all of that, you go further on again. And it does determine your destiny. But of course, the flip side of that is, if you focus negatively on things that can, and you dwell on that, that can slow you down. So we're always better, where at all possible, to go for the positive option and kind of keep that, that idea in mind that our thoughts and our feelings can impact on us. So I'm going to pose a question here. What have these people in common? So i am let you work out who they are. No doubt there are some familiar faces in there, especially um, image number one with Pele. So why, what have they got in common? Basically, they have a, a, a very good message to share with any of us on the importance of adult, adult education, education, learning in life. So what is Pele? And we, we know Pele's story that success is no accident. It's hard work, perseverance, learning, studying. Most of all, loving what you are doing, learning to do. And that's, that's the benefit of adult education, adult learning. Oscar Wilde, you can never be overdressed or overeducated, and it's just kind of so true. And that education isn't about necessarily book learning, but it's about education for life. For some, the importance of education might be how to access um, your, your provisional driving license. How do you proceed with that? So education learning is far much more than what goes on in a classroom. I'm always doing which I, what, which I cannot do in order that I may learn how to do it. And that's perhaps the real challenge about learning, that we often take on learning tasks. And, and because we do that, we can learn so much more. And sometimes that, that might be a barrier to, to pursuing um, further education and learning opportunities. The beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you because it's in your mind, it's in your soul, and it's your learning, it's your interpretation and to be able to share that. And then the secret of getting ahead is getting started. And that's from Mark Twain. And a session like this and Paul's session, that's what we're, we're promoting here is, you know, to, to, to go ahead with, with what's important for you, you've got to get started. You've got to take that very first step and have confidence. And remember that the tr transformative benefits of continuing education cannot be underestimated cannot be underestimated and are evident to anyone who opens themselves up to opportunity. And this reflects what AINTIS is promoting, transforming lives to adult education, a coordinating body. And there's so much extra knowledge and information to be gained from, from the AINTIS website. And in particular, the wonderful stories of adult learners and how they've been found freedom and independence um, in their lives by pursuing adult education. So I would encourage you to go onto that website. So we're also going to talk about mental well-being. And mental well-being can be viewed as a healthy combination of mental health, happiness, life satisfaction, and quality of life. And of course, there's lots more definitive definitions of mental well-being. But if we take those three core aspects, mental health, happiness, life satisfaction, and quality of life, and engaging with adult education and studying has numerous positive effects to this combination that make us feel well and enables us to carry on with our daily lives. It's beneficial to learners in a number of ways, and we're going to have a look at these. So the obvious ones are social. Classes are good ways to meet others with similar interests. And I know we, we are kind of gradually kind of getting used to the idea of online learning, but that won't always be forever. And I know in some previous adult education learning I did, it, it was also online before there was ever COVID. So it's, it's a way of communicating and, and networking with people, but we can do it virtually now and we can make friends for life through our, our classes. Monetary, learn to earn. Um, it can be an economic value. It can enhance your opportunities. It can, in terms of promotion for a job, opportunity. So, you know, within an organization, what is it you can access either through your organization, through adult education, what additional courses can there be for you? And a lot of the courses also available to um, AINTUS and to adult education services have, are, are accredited uh, programs. So personal development, and that's kind of perhaps the most important piece, really. It's what you gain from that learning, setting your own goals, setting your tasks, the confidence that gives you. 
your enhanced knowledge skills to conduct. And I think perhaps that's a really important one there. And I know it depends where you are in the scale of things. But if, if you're a um, parent, the motivation you can be for your children to engage with adult learning and that they realize that learning isn't just about the classroom, it's, it's so much more. And then there's the benefits to mental health because clearly it has a distinct positive effect on our health and our well-being. And it's uh, evidence is showing that, and again, it probably relates back to the social context of what we just spoke about there. It can minimize depression, anxiety, and absolutely loneliness. And there's also evidence to say that when we keep our brains active, it can be uh, beneficial towards um, the risk of dementia. I'm not saying it's a clinical way, but, but it's generally recognized the more we keep our brains active, the better. And what are the additional ben benefits? Because when we start learning, we learn to read, we learn about communication, and it teaches the information seeking skills. And knowledge is all power. And, and then when, when we learn, we, we learn how to source out information, how to research. And back to Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg, reading shaped my dreams, and more reading helped me make my dreams come true. And that's what we can do. We can be inspired. And there's some very wonderful stories on the AINTUS website. But of course, in life, it's not always kind of plain sailing. And the question here to consider is, are there barriers to adult learning? And to think about them for one moment. And I've had a couple of conversations with people. And one, one um, person said to me that her re the reaction she got from her family, like, why would you be bothered learning? Uh, what are you doing that for? And, oh, you're getting too big for your boots. And I suspect that can be the case. And that's often when you hear that type of reaction, it's people don't feel secure themselves. But it's very, very important not to be put off achieving your goal. And back to the opening quotation, what you dwell on and what you expand on grows. So, yes, there will be barriers and there may be time barriers. There may be economic values. Uh, there may be other limitations, but it's really, really important to make that time for yourself if it's given that, you know, the importance. And here is a, a seat that we put up as in Tullamore Mental Health Association it's in the Bridge Centre. And it, the message on that seat is every day may not be good, but there's some good in every day. And at the moment, people cannot sit in that seat for very practical reasons. But, you know, but that's just only temporary. So, Never, never let a barrier define who you are and what it is you want to achieve. And now we're going to show you and introduce you to the five ways to well-being. And I have to say it's a very short video and um, it was made pre-COVID. Did you know there are things we can do every day to improve our mental health and well-being? Connect. Connecting is about building and strengthening relationships with the people around you. We can do this by spending meaningful time with people each day. Arranging a day out with friends, having lunch with someone you work with, or joining a sports team in your local community. By giving time to these relationships, we feel happier and more secure, giving us a better sense of purpose. Be active. Look for ways to be active every day. Find something you enjoy. It doesn't have to be a marathon, but something that suits your fitness and mobility. Cycling, gardening, walking and dancing are all ways that we can get more active. Being active every day causes changes in our brain which can positively affect our mood. Take notice. To take notice is to be present in the here and now. Pay attention to the world around you, nature, people, your thoughts and feelings. Becoming more aware of the present moment can help us enjoy the world around us and understand ourselves better. Keep learning. Keep learning is about learning new skills and information about topics that interest us. We can keep learning by trying a new recipe, signing up for a nighttime course, fixing that broken bike, or taking on a new responsibility in work. Learning can boost our confidence and self-esteem, help build a sense of purpose, and help us connect with others. Give. Giving is about small acts of kindness for other people. You could make someone a cup of tea, sign up for volunteering, or offer to help someone you know with a project. You could just ask a friend or someone you work with how they are and really listen to the answer. Giving back to others can create positive feelings 
and help us feel more satisfied with life. Each of the five ways have been shown to make a positive difference in how we feel and live our life. By including these simple actions every day, we can improve our mental health and well-being. So now to explore the five ways in a little more detail and to say to you that the five ways connect, um, be active, take notice, keep learning and give evolved in the early kind of 2000s because there was a lot of economic crisis as we know it only too well. And the British government of the day set a task to the new economic foundation. What is we can offer people in terms of their well-being? And they came up with the idea that if it's good for you to eat five green vegetables a day, what will be good for your well-being? And after massive research, they came up to these wonderful five ways. And, and, and again, you can explore them further um, on Mental Health Ireland's website. But basically, when we connect with the people around us, it can be family, friends, neighbours. Um, you know, we, we've got workmates in, in many situations. Um, I know, again, we're kind of connecting too virtually, but the important thing is we're connecting, we're talking, and we can make maybe feel part of something. So what the message really about connecting is we must make time each day to, to connect uh, with people, either virtually or, or um, on the phone or have that conversation. And I think people really do want to have that connection. Uh, very, it's very important. And then to be active. Sometimes we always think about this as go for a walk. Um, or a run. Um, but what's really, really important is actually to leave your house. And I realised this was one of my weak links with COVID that I was getting up in the morning, having my breakfast, whatever. And then next thing I was in front of the computer or the laptop and doing what you have to do. And I, I realised I was nearly spending all my day in the house and um, to default or otherwise. So I kind of copped that. And I think my children kind of passed remarks in as well. So now I make it my business to literally in the morning, just go out the back door, go down the way, take a stroll. It doesn't have to be anything massive, but really, really important. Get out of your house. Like it's kind of go open the door because it's good for the mind. It's good for the body. And, and, you know, also like fresh air is good for the skin, um, says you. And then to take notice, like what do we need to take notice of? Um, and that's about, we often heard info, info, about information makes the uh, cat, curiosity um, and the cat, we know that story. So it's important to be curious and uh, to notice the world around us. And I know kind of we're bombarded with statistics and whatnot relating to health issues, but we can avoid that, take them in and leave them go. And um, But it's very important, like we can even in the times that are in it, we can be an autopilot quite a lot. So, um, and not stopping, even, even in the limited um, circumstances that we find ourselves. So be mindful, take some time out. And, and I go back as well to my opening comment. It's very important to give ourselves 30 seconds. Just take a deep breath, take in four, let out for three, take in for four, let out for three. And it's a simple enough exercise. It doesn't have to be like, I know mindfulness is wonderful, but we can have mindfulness in a moment as well by just slowing down. It can help us uh, de-stress. Um, and, and I noticed CNN run a, an ad campaign, um, 30 seconds of calm. And before you know it, like you're in there watching that. And to keep learning, my goodness, like this is what we're focusing on. Keep learning and, and adult education. It might seem a bit ironic, but... But really, learning new things is a great way to keep your brain uh, ticking over, as I say, nicely. And the great thing about this is that a very wide range of learning works. And we know this and a lot of research done on that. And um, you don't need to sign up all the time for a college course or study for an exam. We can do so much more learning without putting extra burden on because exams will be. But they will also be an important mess. mess a measure for us in terms of learning and that's okay but we can like as Paul has spoken about we can learn a new sport maybe try out a new recipe 
and maybe take up reading again. Like learning can be just so creative and so innovative and never to underestimate the value of it. And recently, Aintus, um, and I was very privileged to be on their award uh, adjudication panel for their Star Awards. And like we were just bowled over as an adjudication team, all the learning that's going on in communities from Donegal down to Cork, Galway across to Dublin and local communities really fitting into that lovely community spirit of adult education. So uh, keep the mind open and the give. Now, a lot of people give a lot of themselves, without a doubt. Uh, but the big message is obviously giving helps others. And we're learning a lot about that in terms of COVID. And often it can be just very simple acts of um, kindness and random acts of kindness. Um, you know, like it might be taking on a little bit of extra work for someone or helping somebody out. But what's really, really important in the give, you've also got to give to yourself. Because when you give to yourself and take care of yourself, it's so much easier then to handle other aspects of life. Because often we can feel we're all the time giving and that maybe we're not necessarily in receipt of, 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 a, of, of that reciprocation. And so we can give ourselves little um, treats, say like when you do the shop, buy the extra bar of chocolate or whatever it is, um, slow down, maybe have to take away a cup of coffee and really to kind of um, take care of yourself because at the end of the day, you're the most important resource as life goes. So there are four whys. Why? Why not? Why not you? Why not now? And our message here is like strike now while the iron is hot, as they say. And we, we'll be put, we've put in a link there to a really excellent um, video clip on this that you can source out. So four whys, why? Why not? Why not you? And that's very important. Why not you? And why not now? Avoid procrastination. Um, I can't think about that right now. If I do, I'll go crazy. I'll think about that tomorrow. Scarlett O'Hara. And, and we all know that her closing line in that famous movie, Gone with the Wind, and she used the word damn. And um, it was an unacceptable word all those years ago. And, and um, the movie guys had to remove it, but it cost them over something like, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands to put it back in uh, when the ban was over and that. So avoid procrastination. It is the thief of time and, and never put off until tomorrow what you can do today and um, we can gain so much more. So um, I'd also like to share with you a number of um, useful links as well. And I know there's very many being promoted all of this week. And um, I was involved with Leash Connects and um, um, there was a number of videos and podcasts made and I've put the links in there for two of them. Learning is for life with Leash Offley ETB and you know the power of gratitude and myself and Michelle Baker. And, and there's very many more um, podcasts in that list very well worth listening to. They were coordinated by um, um, a partnership uh, process, uh, Leash Offaly uh, Partnership Company. And then, of course, your libraries. Never underestimate the, the value of your library. Like There's a library in Tullamore, and we often refer to it as the sitting room on the square because of the beautiful um, location of it and looking onto the square. But your library is a really great source of learning. And what's really wonderful about it is it's free. And you, all you have to do is download that Barrowbox app and, um, and you can get audiobooks, you can learn languages, you can pursue your own education. It could be your first step towards learning. And of course, I would um, encourage you to visit our website as well, Mental Health Ireland, where we have a lot of really invaluable resources. And we also run a program and a number of workshops on mental health and well-being in the community, in, in with voluntary agencies, with statutory, with employees and in the workplace. And but again, there is excellent resources there to be downloaded. So um, I'd like to say thank you and to kind of sign off on a message I came across there recently. I, I'm not sure who to attribute it to, but it's based on the word sober. So S to stop. O to observe, B to breed, E to expand, and R to respect and to respond. Say. So thank you very much and please feel welcome to follow up on any of the information on this website. Thank you to Paul and Fanola today for their insightful presentations. 
This webinar is part of the Adult Learners Festival. Please like, share and comment on the video. Thank you for your time.